in a bid to achieve the SDG 14 and realize the ambition of reforestation of Ghana's depleted forest, President Akufuado has charged the Chief Justice Sophia Akufo and the courts to ensure swift adjudication of cases of forest degradation and ensure offenders are given punishments that are deterrent enough to end the depletion. He's also charged the civilian population to rise against all forms of illegal mining and logging to support the Forestry Commission to end the indiscriminate exploitation of the country's forests. The president was speaking at the second National Red Plus Forum held at the Accra International Conference Center. What we make of our natural resources what would be what determines our existence. I call on all gathered here and every Ghanaian to rise up to the occasion. Farmers and local community members should not allow illegal logging and mining to continue. Security agencies on our roads, ports and borders should not look on unconcerned and allow illegal timber products just to pass without confiscation or with corrupt purpose. Most importantly, the Forest Commission should strengthen its law enforcement measures to curb illegal logging, mining and unsustainable harvesting of forest products. To the Chief Justice and members of the judiciary, let us ensure that the fines and punishments that are pronounced on perpetrators of illegal forest activities are deterrent enough and quickly delivered and effected. Well, President Kufado there, he also says that he expects a comprehensive report uh, from the nine-member commission of inquiry that is tasked to inquire, recommend, and specify, if warranted, where referenda are to be held for the creation of new regions in eight, mo in, in eight months. Uh, at the inauguration of the commission at the Flagstaff House, the president also said the move follows petitions that he has received from the chiefs and people of the respective regions. All right, Latif joins me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Latif joins me in the studio. Latif has been to the Flagstaff House there, and uh, let's have a, a, a very quick chat. Latif, tell us a bit more about the composition of this um, commission. Okay, so it's a nine-member uh, commission, and quickly, I would like to run our viewers through there. Right. Names we have Justice S. A. Brobe, a retired Supreme Court judge. Okay, he's the chairman of the commission. Uh, Dr. Grace Bediako, she's former government statistician, statistician. under okay. uh, President Mohammed's administration. We have Movi Mohammed bin Saleh, he's the Emir missionary in charge of Ahmadiyya Muslim Mission in Ghana. Then we have Professor Kwesi Kwafo Adakwa, he's former vice chancellor of KNUST. We have Mrs. Yilian Nadu Tete local governance expert. Uh, Mr. Robert Ajin is a retired director of education. Uh, Dr. David Wellington Esau, he's a senior research fellow at the University of Cape Coast. And we have Professor George Owusu of Ise of Legon. And then last but not least is Mrs. Josephine Hughes. She is a legal practitioner. Okay. So, so, so these are the people who are going to see to the processes yeah. uh, and but it doesn't sound like a done deal it doesn't Oops. sound uh, like a done, done deal because there has to be a referendum for each Ex of them exactly so here is what we should expect that this commission is going to go on the grounds again okay then carry out their own investigations come out if indeed there is a comprehensive demand for the creation of a new region so out of these four regions, they will present the report back to the president. And if it warrants that we carry out and get a new, uh, new regions within these four regions, then mm. uh, the Electoral Commission will be informed. Okay. Then but we will then carry out this referendum. And this is what we should expect before we can say, yes, we have a new region. During the referendum, we should expect at least 50% of the people in their respective regions to vote right. at the referendum. Now, out of this 50%, 80, at least 80% should vote in favor of the referendum. Mm. If you have anything less, then 
it's not going to happen. Then so 80% of the 50% should vote in favor of the referendum and then okay. we can then go ahead and have a new region. Okay, and that's important because there were, there were a lot of uh, uh, divergent views when this matter actually came up. But let's hear the president speak on this. The citizenry should ignore information or speculation being circulated on the alleged demarcation, naming, or sighting of regional capitals. Indeed, there have not been any predetermined regional boundaries, specific names given to any region to be created, and sighting of regional capitals by my government. These are matters that are properly within the remit of the Commission and will be dealt by them and form part of their recommendations. In the event that this Commission, through its consultations with the people, come to the, comes to the conclusion that there is a need and substantial de demand for the creation of new regions or alteration of regional boundaries, I'm required by Article 5, Clause 4 of the Constitution to refer their recommendations to the Electoral Commission for the conduct of a referendum in the specified areas on the issues set forth by the Commission. The Electoral Commission must then conduct a referendum at which at least 50% of the persons entitled to vote cast their votes and of the votes cast, at least 80% cast in favor of the demand for the creation of a region to succeed. At the end of the day, it is the will of the people that will determine the outcome. There exists significant evidence that the demands for the creation of new regions were not made to me alone, but also to other political leaders. It is instructive to note that in the course of the 2016 campaign of the National Democratic Congress, NDC, the main opposition party, the party pledged to facilitate the creation of five new regions had the party been successful at the 2016 elections. In the course of its 2016 campaign, the new patriotic party, NPP, the ruling party also pledged to facilitate the creation of four regions. This clearly demonstrates that there is a meeting of minds of the two major parties on the need for the creation of new administrative regions. Indeed, one of the issues that came to the fore during the discussions of the meeting I held here at Flagstaff House with my predecessors, the three former presidents of the Republic, Their Excellencies Jerry John Rawlins, John Ajikum Kufo, and John Dramani Mahama, was the substantial demands for the creation of new regions. The issue was discussed at length, and it was evident that all the past governments had also been seized with the matter over the years. President Kufuado there earlier this morning. Latif, let's look at the uh, demeanor. What was the demeanor of the, uh, the members who have been put on the commission and what did they say in response to this? Yeah, that of enthusiasm, the zeal. You could feel that these are individuals who are ready to hit the ground running. And it was evident in the speech del delivered by the chairman of the commission, I mean, when he took the stage. Um, after the president's right. inauguration. It looks like a tight shadow for the president today. Did he just go back to change his shirt? Uh, right from the inauguration, we had to move to the I mean, International Conference Center. OK. Oh, so is that the same shirt? Uh, I didn't take notice. Ah, OK. I think I noticed a change there. Mm. But anyway, thank you very much, Latif, for bringing us up to speed. Latif Idris there has been uh, following the president around today and bringing us those updates. Right now, though, we have to quickly rush to parliament because we understand that there's a discussion on the floor uh, concerning the sanctions that were imposed on some media houses by the National Communications Authority. Uh, there was a statement by the finance minister and upon which they are 
having a discussion at the moment. We also understand that finance minister will be speaking about the Ghana A60 expenditure. How much did we spend? How much was allocated for it? Let's go over there now where Mahama Yariga, member of parliament for West Central, is, uh, uh, is speaking. If there are new frequencies, you can also allocate to those that you want to allocate frequencies to. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Honorable Deputy Minister. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker, for this opportunity. Mr. Speaker, I'd like to commend the Honorable Minister of Communication for such a brilliant speech and for the fair position that she's taking to protect the rule of law, to protect the right being right and being continued in Ghana. Mr. Speaker, I also like to take this opportunity to commend the Acting Director General of the NTA and the NTA Board for being firm and working without fear, without fear or favor. Mr. Speaker, I'd like to establish a number of facts that indeed all of us in this House do recognize the position that the NCA is, manda is mandated to manage and issue, lines, issue authorizations for the use of spectrum in Ghana. Mr. Speaker, I would like to further confirm and establish the fact that all of us in this House do recognize the fact that the NCA has a mandate to um, punish wrongdoing as far as the utilization of national spectrum is concerned. Mr. Speaker, earlier this year, I had the opportunity to lead the NCA to meet the Public Accounts Committee that is chaired by the Honorable Deputy Minority Speaker. And Mr. Speaker, sorry, Minority Leader. And Mr. Speaker, it was a great learning experience for me with the direction that he had given us on how to manage the national resources. And he made it clear that he wasn't happy with the way that certain individuals were not uh, being managed properly as far as their usage of national spectrum was concerned. Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, the NCA is working with the rule of law. Mr. Speaker, the NCA, if you recall, have, and, and the Honorable Minister did make that statement, that in March this year, in March this year, the NCA did publish in the national dailies an intention to carry out an audit of national spectrum as far as the radio operators were concerned. Indeed, the NCA followed up with letters to each of these radio houses and they went ahead and carried out their audit. Mr. Speaker, in, May, in, in June and July this year, those media houses that were found not to be in compliance were written to. Mr. Speaker, there are over 500 authorizations that have been issued in this country for individuals and entities to operate radio stations. Out of the 500, 131 were found to be deficient in their operation. There are another 300 plus that are doing well. I would have expected that we as legislators in this house would have commended those individuals, those entities that are complying with the law and encourage them to continue doing the right thing. That's but on the flip side, I realize that our friends on the other side are focusing heavily on those that have rather gone against the law. And I find it to be a big matter of concern. Mr. Speaker, the Honorable, the Honorable Minister has in her statement, two, twice two sections of her statement said that any entity that feels agreed by the position that the NCA has taken, should petition, should petition the NCA. Again, she has said that when she receives these petitions, she will look at it. Mr. Speaker, I don't see, I don't see why, as legislators, we are not pushing for those that have breached the law to do the right thing. 
You don't expect that the Ministry of Communication and that the Minister would rather go and go and overturn the, the penalties that the NTA have, have, have put out there when the people are clearly doing wrong and when the people are going against the rule of law. Mr. Speaker, as legislators, I think that we should all protect the rule of law in this country. When people were, 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 were taking part in Ghana, took a firm decision to, to, to fight Galapé, okay? There were others that were saying that it was a wrong decision. He stood by it, and we all know what the benefits are. Recently, in the, in the, in the petroleum industry, um, the, His Excellency the President and Cabinet have taken a firm decision. I am 100% I am convinced that my boss, will take or is taking the right decision as far as protecting the rule of law and sanitizing the industry is concerned. Mr. Speaker, my boss is Honorable S. Lousu. She is my proud boss, whether you like it or not. Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, But that is George Anda, the Deputy Communications Minister, there uh, responding to Mahama Yaraga, Member of Parliament. I should correct it uh, for Boko Central. Uh, I indicated earlier that he was for Wa Central. It is indeed Boko Central. What he's basically saying is that he believes that, or the Communications Ministry believes that the NCA has done the right thing by being firm, what he calls firmness. He says that the NCA are basically working within the rule of law and that letters were sent prior to the sanctions being brought upon the uh, set state, uh, radio station. Uh, in July. He says that there are about 500 authorizations that have been issued so far and out of that 131 have uh, flouted the rules as you may already know uh, but that those who have not flouted the rules and those who have stayed within the remit of the law should actually be uh, commended by, by the legislators. That's what he thinks should be should happen. Uh, he's also saying that well if you do have issues that there is a window of petition that has been opened by the minister. The minister of uh, communication has indicated that if you have if you as a media house has any uh, reason for which uh, you know you can defend and say that your uh, the sanctions brought upon you was not um, was not deserved that you should petition the minister and write to them so there should really not be any qualms about this he says that the legislators should protect the rule of law and by so doing they will be sanitizing the way uh, the airwaves and by so doing they will be supporting basically um, what the uh, National Communications Authority has done. The discussion is still ongoing, as you can see. We'll bring you up to speed. That is ABA Fuseni on the ground. But let's take a very quick break as we sort out these issues. We'll be right back. Please stay with us. Some radio stations, as we speak today, have been asked to pay a colossal 61 million Ghana cities. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, failing which, if that frequency is confiscated by NCA, it will be sold to somebody for 30,000 Ghana cities. Can you imagine? Can you, it doesn't make sense. It doesn't make any sense. Mr. Speaker, if they suck you in the evening, you don't greet good night. It doesn't make any sense. Repeat again. It is not possible. Even as a revenue measure, that in a situation where it should have been possible for you to engage this airing station, and Mr. Speaker, let me let me leave no doubt in anybody's mind that there are obligations in respect of both SCA and radio station managers. I agree that radio station managers have their side of the obligation to meet, and no one by any stretch of any logic would argue that they have no issues on their side to meet. They should do. But Mr. Speaker, if you were to renege on your responsibility as a father for so many years, and you gather your children one day and think that that one day advice should be able to suffice them for all the years of neglect that you have done, yes, you are living a life of folly. You are not a wise man. You are not a wise and responsible father. The NCA, yes. The NCA has been shown to be derelict of its responsibilities yeah, yeah, yeah. for so many years. Yeah, yeah. Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, even as they collect yearly fees from the radio stations, 
They collect yearly fees from the radio station. And we are talking about from 2008. Yes. Not, not, not only recently. As far back as 2008. Why you are in office? Mr. Speaker, that is why even in the in respect of the decision, my colleagues who spoke before me alluded to the attitude of presidents of the past. That you, 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 you as a father sometimes consciously err on the side of freedom of expression. <laughs> and so, Mr. Speaker, I want to take this opportunity to urge the minister, and I'm very happy that Mr. B Mr. Speaker, the Honorable Minister herself, I think over two weeks ago, when he, she met the media, alluded to the fact that the measures as currently imposed by the NCA were harsh, were excessively punitive. The Honorable Minister is here. She recognized that even in enforcing the law, it must be done with a humane face. Mr. Speaker, it is a known international political scientist and jurist, Montesquieu, who argued that in as much as there is a face to the law, the speaker onus was on the spirit of the law. It is out of the spirit of the enforcement of the spirit of the law, Mr. Speaker, that the true beautiful face of the law comes out. Tell them again. <laughs> so, like in this situation that we are talking about, Mr. Speaker, mm. the excessiveness of this action is tantamount to killing a mosquito with a sledgehammer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 You may be. And you criticize him. You criticize him. You may be. I, I hope. I hope. Not in talking about enforcing the law. I hope that uh, we will not kill uh, Mr. Speaker. the bulldozer. We will not use the bulldozer. So, <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Speaker, that is why our elders say that when somebody releases bad air on you <laughs> and you are overzealous to retaliate, <laughs> you will bring out the reality. <laughs> Maybe if Husseini there, you can trust him to give you a lot of uh, uh, proverbs, uh, some very funny as that. Well, he's been at, at the time that we got him through, uh, what, one of the things that he said was that 61 million Ghana cities uh, uh, has been imposed on some of the radio stations and that if those radio stations are unable to pay that money, those frequencies will be given out to other people. That is going to cost about 30,000 cities. And you saw Fifi Kwete there backing him, actually supporting in the point that it makes no sense to take uh, to take to take the frequency away from someone who cannot pay 61 million CDs only to get paid 30,000 CDs for that. He says that there are yearly fees taken from those stations. The measures are harsh and punitive, and it's as, it's as though the NTA is trying to kill a mosquito with what he calls a sledgehammer. And Just off to Parliament we go once again. Al Hassan Suini uh, uh, is on the floor at the moment. You do know that he's worked at Radio Go before, one of the stations that's uh, under, or that's, the reeling under this sanction imposed by the N NCA. Let's hear him out. Yes. The airline was signed by your major minority leader. <laughs> <laughs> so that's the irony. So it's strange that those who proposed, led, and signed it are the ones now condemning. Mr. Speaker, thank you very much for the guidance. Unfortunately, I am unable to debate with you, and I respect your position, so I'll take your guidance and proceed. Mr. Speaker, once again, it has to be emphasized that indeed parliaments all over the world do make bad laws. And when it comes to our attention that a law that is meant to regulate it is, it's, it's turning out to be stifling, and it's turning out to be, uh, what do you call it, to frustrate the process. Mr. Speaker, we all have to come together to see how dispassionately we can address that 
uh, problem. And so again, I talk of the PDA. Mr. Speaker, also, on our law books, we have the death sentence. Mr. Speaker, it is not for nothing that no president in the history of this country has ever signed the death warrant, even though it remains on our law books. It's for good reason. Mr. Speaker, again, in one of the arguments, my colleague spoke of how when the NCA appeared before the Public Accounts Committee, reference was made to charges that the NCA had not received from 2010. Mr. Speaker, that goes to confirm my position that it is for good reason that no president has ever signed the death warrant. Because previous administrations, Mr. Speaker, knew that they had to take these charges. But perhaps they did not take those charges, not because they were unmindful of the law, but because they appreciated the need for the support of media pluralism in this country more. So, Mr. Speaker, let nobody act like a champion in the application of a law that clearly is going to frustrate free expression and limit the channels of same, especially under a president who in his past life has always championed for the expansion of the media. Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, and this is not only a local matter, and I'll make reference, Mr. Speaker, to a report that was launched in September 2011 by a very reputable international organization known as Freedom House. Freedom House issued this special report September 2011, Mr. Speaker, and in the introduction, with your permission, I will quote what it says about free expression and the need to expand safe. In some parts, Mr. Speaker, I quote, in some parts of the world, the threats to press freedom are explicit and often violent. Journalists are murdered or imprisoned. States maintain strict media monopolies and domestic audiences are cut off from foreign news sources. Such unambiguously hostile conditions typically elicit strong responses from international advocacy groups and democracies and democracies that are committed to defending freedom of expression. However, in a much broader range of countries, governments are using the more subtle tools of media regulation to restrict press freedom, maintaining a veneer of legality and pluralism that is less likely to draw attention or criticism from abroad. Manipulation of the regulatory framework allows leaders to either tolerate or rein in influential news outlets depending on the political situation and permits even democratically elected governments to fortify themselves against future electoral competition. Mr. Speaker, this special report describes the primary types of media regulation that are used to restrict press freedom as one, statutory controls on licensing and regulations. Mr. Speaker, Ghana, therefore, by this report, simply qualifies as one of those countries where governments seem to be using regulatory and licensing reforms to clamp down on media freedoms. Mr. Speaker, those are not my words. That re research was not done by me. It was done by the Freedom House and launched. And that finding 
Mr. Speaker, is typical of what is being discussed here today. And that is why, again, I call on a dispassionate approach to how together we can rectify whatever anomaly is leading to the closure of 130 platforms where people have or use to express themselves, which by effect is limiting the platforms available for people to express themselves. Mr. Speaker, the minister in conclusion, in conclusion, Mr. Speaker, the minister in her presentation talked about how preposterous or absurd, and those are her words, it is, to link what is happening to political witch hunt. Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, I have learned that if it walks like a duck, walks like a duck, and looks like a duck, Mr. Speaker, then it's obviously a duck. And that is why we don't have to pretend about some of the motivations. And Honorable Ayanga said it, that it will be interesting to find out who will own these new licenses after they are confiscated. Alasa Sweeney there uh, speaking on the floor of Parliament. Like I indicated, he has worked at Radio Girls before, and uh, they are sister stations in Monti FM, for example. Those are part of the stations that have come under um, the sanctions of the um, NCA. He basically uh, speaks about the fact that this appears to be a law that's going to frustrate uh, free expression and uh, what he calls a president that's known to be a champion of free speech and that obviously doesn't uh, uh you can't it's not something that you can easily reconcile he speaks of uh media regulation and the fact that it it's restricts press freedom and he quotes from a research that is that was done somewhere in 2011. he says that media uh, some of these restrictions are less likely to draw criticism from abroad and it then fortifies parties in power against electoral development and from based on that assessment he believes that ghana qualifies as one of the countries that are using regulatory and licensing regimes to clamp down on media freedom in the end he's basically basically calling for a dispassionate approach to the matter one of the key things that he raises there as well and something which he refers to uh honorable Mama Mayariga for raising also is to find out exactly who are the people who might be interested in these frequencies should they be taken away from the original uh, owners or from those who are having who have flouted the rules according to the NCA and who are having to um, deal with it. Let's go back to Parliament and hear some more of the discussions ongoing. I don't the Chief Minister, I'll give you the last word before I come to the leaders. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker, for giving this opportunity. And I rise to support the statement ably made by my minister and all the other colleagues who have supported this action by the NCA. Mr. Speaker, the issue at stake today is not about ascribing the enforcement of compliance with excellence of precedent. Honourable members, hold on. I have regards to the time I direct that we sit outside the normal time. Thank you. Mr. Speaker, thank you very much. The issue at stake today about the action of the NCA is not about ascribing any wrongdoing to his excellency the president of violating the freedom of, of, of the citizenry in terms of the speech. The issue is not about political witchcraft, uh, witch hunting, Mr. Speaker. Neither is the issue about restriction on the freedom of speech or media pluralism in this country. That is very far from it, Mr. Speaker. The issue at stake is about the rule of law. As you rightly pointed out, the issue at stake is about whether the NCA is acting ultra virus, whether the NCA is breaching the laws passed by this, uh, this noble house, and whether the NCA is acting out of its power. That is the crux of the matter, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, the NCA 
and as ably expressed by my honorable minister, has been mandated by law to, to, to come up with sanctions in the way and manner in which it finds necessary. The NC also has the power, Mr. Speaker, to regulate this finance spectrum to ensure, apart from all things, that it promotes competi competition in the media space. Mr. Speaker, what we are talking about now is not about any individual being restricted from expressing their opinion or any individual speaking freely on what they think. The issue is about businesses which have been established on which channels individuals are going to use to express or to air their views about issues about this country. Those businesses under the rules and under the conditions under which their licenses were given to operate must abide by those regulations and those conditions by which the license, the authorization were given. That is the crux of the matter, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, as we speak, out of the five, more than 500 million, only 131 are being asked to comply, the, comply with the provisions of the authorizations. All the other more, all the other ones which are still operating, Mr. Speaker, if anyone in this country want to express their views, if anyone... That is the Deputy Minister of Communication, Vincent Odote, Odote there. He's also Honorable Member of Parliament for La Dadi Kutupon constituency. He's basically reiterating the point that was made earlier by the Deputy Minister of Communication, um, George Anda, about the fact that this is not really about a violation of freedoms. This is not really about violation, uh, political witch hunting. It is not really about media pluralism rather than about uh, the rule of law. He goes on to say that it's more about establishment of businesses and the operations of those businesses uh, as compared to suppression of free speech, which, like I said, resonates with the point that was made by George Under, Deputy Minister of uh, Communication, earlier there. We'll do, bring more summaries to you in our subsequent bulletins, but as and when we have to cross over, we will do that. But at the